Hello, welcome back to my channel. So I have <laughs> changed location today because uh, I'm filming this on my lunch break. So theoretically, this will be a quick video. Also, there is major concerns that people are going to walk past, but we are fighting those anxieties because who gives a shit? Me. I give a shit, but I'm trying not to give a shit. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Right, now that that's all out in the air. Today, I have a book haul for you. It is my first book haul of 2022. Um, I have been slowly picking up books throughout the month, throughout the year, rather. Now that we're in March, we're like a quarter of the way through the year. <laughs> God. Um, so I thought, like, you know, a quarterly haul, if I do have any books to haul, might be a fun way to do it this year. I'm not on any book buying ban this year, but I'm just being a bit more sensible and making sure that if I'm acquiring books, it's because I really, really want to read them. So I've kind of split this up into when I acquired them as opposed to like genre or anything. So it's going to be a bit all over the place. But the first book I have is a book that I was gifted because I was on the blog tour bookstagram tour sorry for it which is the sound of stars by alicia dow here is my picture from the blog tour um i very much enjoyed this book um so you can go find my bigger deeper thoughts on that instagram post i'll link it below um but overview this is a ya sci-fi light sci-fi set on earth um kind of post-apocalyptic vibes aliens have taken over and we follow What's her name? Ellie, that's it. We follow Ellie and an AI called Morris, who is one of the aliens, as they kind of come together to kind of fight the system. Uh, there's a lot about books in here, a celebration of music, uh, and it's a really wholesome story. Okay, then the next few were ones I picked up in Waterstones, and one of them is actually one that Ben gifted me while we were in Waterstones. I gifted Ben a book and Ben gifted me a book. So fun having a reader as a partner, honestly. Anyway, I picked up three books. I bet you know what this is, just from the sprayed edges. <laughs> the first book I picked up was When Life Gives You Mangoes by Kareem Getton. Here is the cover. I really love this one. So this is middle grade. I'm actually reading it at the moment. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. Yes, yeah, so this is middle grade set in Sycamore, which I believe is in Jamaica. The author is Jamaican. Uh, it's set in the Caribbean anyway. We follow this girl who lives in Sycamore and she seems to not be able to remember anything that happened last summer and alongside that this new English girl has just arrived on the island in their town and so that's kind of like where we go um, and I'm really enjoying the middle grade vibes of this one. Then I picked up Winter in Sokcho by Elisa Shua Dusapin. This is translated from the French by Anissa Abbas Higgins. This is actually set in Korea in a town called Sokcho, which is on the border between North and South Korea. This is actually Amy's book club pick for March, which is a book club that I'm in that's run by my best friend Amy. I will link it below. Um, but yeah, the overarching premise of this book is that a French graphic novelist goes to this town, Sokcho, um, to kind of discover the authentic Korea. There's basically a young French Korean woman who is a receptionist at this place, meets this guy, decides that she'll show him what the authentic Korea is. And from the blurb, I get the vibes that he he wants to know what the authentic Korea is, but doesn't necessarily actually want to. That's the vibe I get. That's all I know. I'm very intrigued. I love this cover. Then the final book I have is, did you guess? It was Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. Really, really excited. I think everyone knows this book, but if you don't, this is a YA contemporary following Felix, who is a trans boy. Uh, and I think this is quite like a messy conflict book that deals a lot with like feelings of like wanting to get revenge on people that have caused him harm. Yeah, an anonymous student begins sending him transphobic messages and Felix comes up with a plot for revenge. Really excited to get to that one, which will be soon, most likely, because I feel left out that I've not read Felix Ever After yet. So that's the Waterstones haul. Then I picked these two up, actually both from the works, um, which I don't really ever go into, but I saw them in, whoops. I 
saw them in there and I was like, wow. So I bought them. <laughs> so we have got Rainbow Milk by Paul Mendes. Um, this is one I have seen a lot on Bookstagram and I really wanted it. <laughs> I think this is like a novel of two halves almost. So I'll just read out the beginning part of the, um, the blurb for you. In the black country in the 1950s, ex-boxer Norman Alonso is a determined and humbled and humble Jamaican who has moved to Britain with his wife to secure a brighter future for them and their children. At the turn of the millennium, Jesse seeks a fresh start in London, escaping from a broken immediate family, a repressive religious community and the desolate, disempowered black country, but finds himself at a loss for a new centre of gravity and turns to sex work to create new notions of love, fatherhood and spirituality. I feel like this is going to talk about a lot of themes I'm really interested in reading about. I've heard a lot of, I guess, a bit of mixed things in terms of the disconnect between the two parts, but I kind of want to go in, like, not just, like, get that out of my head. I just want to go in, see if I enjoy it. So that is Rainbow Milk. Then I have got Frying Plantain by Zalika Reed Benter. This is a collection of like stories following a girl called Cara Davis uh, and she is kind of caught in the middle of her Canadian nationality and her Jamaican nationality um, and so I think, believe it's set in Canada but it might also be set in Jamaica at the same time I'm not quite sure um, so I believe it is 12 stories but I don't think it's like short stories in the way that you imagine short stories it's like short stories following this girl from girlhood through into adulthood and her kind of um figuring out her identity I guess um so that is really sold me again I've seen this a lot on bookstagram um and I was very intrigued to pick it up so I was very excited when I saw it in the works not somewhere I try to buy books from because I feel like there's probably a lot of conversations to be had about why their books are so cheap and should they be but I sold them I picked them up we move on <laughs> where next okay the next four books nope oh no i forgot a waterstones book okay quick waterstones interlude i have got the baby is mine by oyin cam braithwaite oyin cam braithwaite wrote uh my sister the serial killer which i absolutely loved this is one of the quick reads i think it was for like world book day so this was a pound amazing um so this is a short story that is set in the pandemic it says a wickedly dark story about pandemics parents and playboys very very intrigued uh this is actually one i started reading um back when i was down in basingstoke i had it out from the library then we moved i didn't manage to finish it i had to go give it back to the library and here we are so i'm very excited to finally own a copy and you might be seeing this in a video soon and i will say no more <laughs> okay the next three i have all got from gaze the word no i didn't why do i keep saying that it's the other gay bookshop <laughs> these three i all got from queer lit which is in manchester and here we go right so the first one is honestly i'm like gays the word just always comes out of my mouth right beneath the streets by adam mcqueen this is an adult crime book a queer crime book which i'm very excited about these three are all queer because they're from queer lit yeah so this is historical it's set in 1976 in london and the naked corpse of a young rent boy is fished out of a pond on Hampstead Heath. It kind of looks like it's going to dive into a lot about queerness and social class and the treatment of queer people in the 70s. And yeah, I'm really intrigued how it's going to play out as a kind of crime thriller, but talking about those topics as well. So that's the first one. Then I picked up Thinner by Nino Kipri. This has non-binary rep, which I was really excited about. And it's a short novella that just sounds wild so this is set in like a fake ikea and an elderly customer slips through a portal to another dimension and then these two employees are like trying to like track her down but it just sounds crazy really exciting it says ava and jules will brave carnivorous furniture swarms of identical furniture spokespeople and the deep resentment simmering between them what a fun interesting novella concept that's that one. Then the final book from Quirly I have got is Salt Slow by Julia Armfield. This is a collection of short stories. Me and Ben like to read short stories in the evening together. Uh, so I wanted to pick up a queer short story collection. Again, sounds 
really weird. <laughs> Uh, which is very exciting. Hard to kind of just sum up a short story collection that I've not read yet. So I'm just going to give you some title like that the blurb does. It says, teenagers develop ungodly appetites. A city becomes insomniac. Uh, bodies are diligently picked apart to make up better ones. Sounds fascinating. Love a short story collection. It's on the pile. Then the next two I picked up were both from this bookshop in town which is like a free bookshop you can just go in take a book you can also go in and take books to donate you can donate money as well um, a really cool great concept uh, and so i found these two books and i had to pick them up and made a donation alongside so the first one is shuggy bane by douglas stewart this is one i have heard many a thing about it is the winner of the 2020 Booker Prize. It's set in 1980s Glasgow and we follow a little boy and I know that it's heart-wrenching and sad and talks about a lot of hard themes and topics. Uh, and that's kind of all I know. So I picked it up and I'm intrigued. That's that one. Then the next one I picked up was Me and White Supremacy by Leila Saad. Uh, this is non-fiction and it's kind of like a workbook sort of like journaling prompts so I'll be kind of like going through it a bit slower as opposed to just reading the book it's not necessarily that kind of book where you would just read it all in one go because it's more of like a reflection so yeah I'm excited to go through this one reflect on my own internal biases quick tea break because that is a lot of talking I just did so the last pile I got these all from Tarish shops so mm, I'm gonna put them back there, I don't know why I picked them all up. Let's just go through one by one. So they probably will have stickers on still. <laughs> the first book is Sleeping Giants by, I don't actually know who it's by, Sylvain Nouvelle. Uh, so this one really excites me because it sounds like An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. It kind of gives me those vibes. And Lay really recommended this book as well from Bookshelf Soliloquies. And then I found it in a charity shop for two pounds. And I was like, yes, please. The reason I think it sounds like an absolutely remarkable thing is because of the blurb. I will read it to you. As a young girl, Dr. Rose Franklin made a life-changing discovery. Hidden deep underground, she found an enormous ornate metal hand. Tests prove the artifact predates all human civilization. Where did it come from? Were we meant to find it? <laughs> very excited. Sounds very like this kind of sci-fi that I enjoy, aka sci-fi light, kind of set on earth very excited for that one and i have heard very good things then picked up a bit of a rogue one for me i would say that is the pull of the stars by emma donahue i got this for 199 um so this is set in dublin in 1918 um i actually just saw um victoria from what victoria read said this was like one of her favorite books and she's rereading it that made me excited yeah i've heard really good things i've read room by emma donahue way ages ago and I did really enjoy it so I do know that I like her writing but I guess I just don't read that much that historical like if it's historical it always seems to be like the 60s or 70s um so yeah I don't know I think that's just why I'm a bit nervous about it but I am really excited then I picked up How Do You Like Me Now by Holly Bourne this was 50p hardback 50p okay um, Holly Bourne, I've only ever read her YA and I know that this is an adult one that has been mixed, received in a mixed manner. What am I trying to say? It's had mixed reviews. There we go. <laughs> um, but I am really intrigued about it. So in this book, let's see, we seem to follow this woman called Tori who's like in her 30s. She's like kind of famous or like, I think, or like famous within a space, you know. Um, she's inspired like millions of women, but she is kind of living a bit of a lie in that sense because in her personal life things are not quite as good as it's like externally it seems and so it's about navigating relationships in your 30s and all the kind of conflicts and issues and things that come up when you're in your 30s very interesting i'm intrigued if i'm going to relate to this or feel a bit a bit distant in the way i now feel a bit distant to young adult or if i will begin to now feel more connected with this kind of perspective even though i'm not in my 30s i'm 27 but the sneering isn't it we're not going to talk about that 
The next book I picked up was The Grace Year by Kim Liggett. So this is a dystopian. The concept is that there's a grace year and so the concept it I'm gonna pretend that, that didn't happen. Wait for him to leave. Oh yeah, I'm just not gonna look. Okay, he's gone. So the concept of this book is that there's a something called the Grace Year and all all of these girls in this isolated village get like banished to this forest for a whole year. No one, it's like forbidden to talk about this year. They go there to kind of rid themselves and purify themselves to come back ready to marry. And yeah, that's kind of like the base concept that I know about um, this book. I am excited because I like dystopians a lot. I, I get nervous when they're feminist dystopians because honestly all I can think about is, is this gonna be trans inclusive? Like, is this gonna be really, really binary? That's all I can think about. I'm always a bit, I'm a bit nervous to read it, but it was 1.99, I'm excited. So I'll keep you posted. Right, we have made it to the very final book, which is One by One by Ruth Ware. This was also 50p. This is like a brand new hardback. I picked this up post Christmas because Hells from the Hells Project, I'll link her Instagram below, said about going to charity shops just post Christmas because people unhaul all these non-readers unhaul loads of books that they're never going to read and I found this brand spanking new hardback for 50p. Uh, anyway so yeah this is One by One by Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware is a thriller author. I, re I really liked In a Dark Dark Wood. I did not like The Woman in Cabin 10 but I've heard her newer books are better and this is one of her newest so I'm very excited. It follows a group of colleagues who all get stuck in this kind of a sh like a chalet sorry on the ski slopes and I think is it one by one they start to disappear I think that's the concept very excited um love the kind of tense isolated atmospheres that Ruth Ware creates so yeah I'm really excited for that one and that is all the books that was a lot of books <laughs> that is just the books I've acquired from January to March um I'm really excited for them have you read any of these are there any you think I should prioritise? Please let me know. I'd be very intrigued. Uh, and yeah, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, what is the most recent book that you have bought? I would love to know whether that's new, like charity shop, anything, ebook, audiobook, you know, anything counts, obviously. I'd be intrigued to know. Uh, and if you cannot be bothered, <laughs> or there's too many to choose from, or you just don't have anything to comment, that's absolutely fine. Please leave me a little snowflake emoji for one by one. That would be fab. Um, it really helps me out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. That also helps me a lot. Subscribe if you'd like to see more and I will see you in a new video. Bye. Why did I do that? I don't know. Okay, bye.